In September, I had the opportunity to get together with Sandy Gervais from Pieces of My Heart for an interview. Sandy is from Algona, Iowa, which is about 45 minutes away, and she invited me to her studio for a chat. Her studio is packed with her wonderful treasures, bolts of her fabric, and her quilts made from her many fabric lines she's done over the years. The way she displayed the quilts and her collections was very inspiring and adorable. The waterfall of quilts down the staircase was my favorite. Sandy, how long have you been a fabric designer? I've been designing fabric for 28 years. Oh wow, that's a long time. You've done a lot of lines, I'm assuming. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many lines I've done. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Lots of bolts of fabric. Um, what's your favorite kind of fabric to design? Well, I do seasonal usually you know all the seasons of the year um you know i don't really have a favorite although maybe fall that's kind of what i was thinking i maybe see a lot fall. of fall over there yeah how long does it take to get from first draft of you designing the fabric till it is in your hands a year and a half a year and a half we used to work on a year and then we moved to a year and a half and i'm not surprised we might move even further because we're still having some supply chain problems and I don't know if that's going to go away. So I think we might even move to two years ahead. Wow, that's a long time mm -hmm. to go from mm -hmm. starting to think about it till sometimes it comes I, in. I, sometimes in my head, I can't remember what year I'm in because really in my life, I'm in another year. Correct. <laughs> that makes sense yeah. when you're planning that far out yeah. ahead. What fabric line is shipping out now? What will be in the store soon? Um, awesome Autumn is shipping right now, which is the fall line, and also Adele and Winter. They're both shipping right now. Do you have fabric you could show us? I do. My um, This is Awesome Autumn. Um, this is a, not, looks black, but it's in real person. It's not really black. It's between black and brown, which I like to use uh, for my fall lines. It's got the kind of tanny brown. And of course the oranges and the pumpkins and the plaids. And, and you have a panel? This this line has a panel. And usually when I do a line of fabric, I start with the panel or sometimes even start with the name. And this one, I wanted to spell out autumn and just have little motifs in among the alphabet. And this will be a series like Adele in the Adele series. And this will be each season happens to have six letters so uh, next up will be spring and i just finished up winter and then summer will follow and they will all be spelled out with the different little motifs and this panel comes in uh, the vanilla color as well as this darker raisin color it's gorgeous so these are the coordinates behind you yep. how how many coordinates come out with a line oh it's usually 30 around 30 is what we try to keep it around. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes a little less. And how do you decide which fabrics to showcase? Um, I, I do, I design more than what they need and then they do the picking and choosing. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So how many do you design? Well, you know, each, each print comes in three ways, at least three ways, sometimes four, but almost always three. And so I will do them in more colors. Okay, so you'll do all the fabrics in more colors than we see, right. and then they pick the mm -hmm. ones they like. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet the other ones are pretty too, though. Oh, because there's one, two, three, four, and the reds are five. There's five colorways, and they only pick three colors. So. Gotcha. Wow, that's fascinating. And I do a lot of, um, the seasonal, of course, has a lot of motifs that match the season, like the pumpkins and the acorns and the leaves, and then I mix in some some just ditzies and stripes and plaids that aren't necessarily seasonal. And you have your own little fabric store here in your <laughs> studio where you can yes, you we can get shop. Yes, yardage of all of our fabric. Brady Blake sends us yardage, and so um, it's not a fabric store. It's open to the public. It's no, just <laughs> it's just my fabric store. Um, we get the fabric. We make the quilts. Um, and then it goes on the shelves. And you get to use it and inspire yourself with your own fabrics. Right. And um, this line has a kit, I think. Most of the time when I do a line of fabric, Riley Blake will do a kit of one of the patterns or sometimes two of the patterns. 
And they always come in a really cute kit box, um, you know, with the motifs on it. And this year, the kit is actually um, the squirrels, which is called Hide and Seek. And I actually was watching my grandchildren play Hide and Seek when this popped it, idea for this quilt popped into my mind. And then here on this, you can see where this is a free pattern. We cut apart the, um, the letters of the panel and made a runner and then a mat. And that's a free pattern on Riley Blake Designs website. And this is the cute little box. So the boxes up there are those are past previous lines. lines. Yep. And then the second um, kit, sometimes they do more than one kit, is let's pop some corn. And this has been very popular. And this uses a five-inch five inch stacker to make the little, we cut those in one-inch squares to make the little um, corn kernels. And, and like I said, this has been very popular, and it too comes in a real cute box. So the quilt on the table is the one that's in the box. Right. Two, there's two different kits. These little guys, we haven't sewn their eyes on yet. This is just back from the quilter. <laughs> <laughs> At least it has a binding on it. Right. What's your next line to come out? Next up will be Bumble and Bear, which is a baby line, kids line. It's a, the panel is uh, teddy bears and he's got a bee always tied around his wrist or oh, in cute. his car or something. Cute. So that's up next. And when will that, when will that come out? November. So soon. Okay. And then, um, then we're already into, you know, a whole another line, but, um, then next up then will be uh, spring, which is spelled, spring is spelled out in a panel. Very cool. Like autumn was spelled out, only now we're doing spring. So then that will be up next. And I think that's like March or April. Very nice. So when shop owners first see your fabric, they see it on a storyboard like this. So it's uh, just on paper and they get to see what the different fabrics will be and some of the projects that will be made from the fabric and it's kind of fun this is a cheater print and uh if i when i do a cheetah print i like to do something that i would probably never do as a real quilt like the curved seams it's just too much work and this line also has some wide backs which has the little motifs from the the panel in oh, the nice. wide back and they're 108 wide okay and some more patterns and then this is another pattern, the Thankful Turkey. And then on, We haven't made him yet. And then on the storyboard, it shows all the different colorways that the prints come in. So they can see the different um, color variations that the big print is in, that the pumpkins come in. And because then, as a shop owner, sometimes I can't buy them all, but I can then I can choose. pick. Yep. Right. And every line um, of mine has textures that go with it. Now, these were the two colors that hadn't been produced before. And there's also the orange and the gold and the red, which were produced in the Adele and Autumn lines. So they carry over to this line. So all the lines, you'll find the basic uh, texture in it. And this is a Riley Blake uh, texture or basic. It, it's called Textures by Sandy Gervais. And like I said, every line has a texture that goes with that line. And then there were some that we are just adding in as basics that haven't been in the line yet. Just so you have, you know, a pink and a good blue and a red and a black. This is the texture that goes with the new Awesome Autumn. It's more that blackish brown. This is Awesome Autumn, green, the pumpkin. I can't remember what this is called. Um, persimmon. And then these ones underneath go with some of your other fabric lines? Yep. So you have a lot of different textures. Do you know how many different textures you have? I don't. I really don't. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and all good. So tell us about your Christmas line that you had out earlier this year. Okay, this is a, was shipping to the stores in June and July, and this is called Adele in Winter, and this is a part of the Adele series. I started out with... Um, Adele in autumn and then there was Adele in spring and now there's Adele in winter and coming up next will be Adele in um, summer. So the Adele lines were based off of my grandmother every year 
every season would put her flowers in a fruit jar. She never used a vase, she only ever used a blue fruit jar. And that's how the whole series began. And so this is the line. Um, this is the signature print on the outside. And then the, these are the different colorways. And there again, we have that blackish brown print color. And these also have textures that go with them. So I see you have um, a lot of different scales. So how do you determine what fabrics will be what scale? Well, I just, we always have to design what's called the main. Um, and I, then I always like something geometrical or, or, you know, square edge, which is the plaids. And then you always have to have a real little ditzy, kind of more for backgrounds, and then the medium sized. So a little bit of something for everybody. You know, and do I want to paint this in the tiny little colors or a tiny little scale? No, that's why, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why that's the bigger scale, like this pine cone. Yeah, that was, took a while to paint that out. So what kind of projects did you have for this line? Oh, here's some more prints. Oh, more prints. And another cheater. Another cheater. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. would you ever do this? No. No. And you know, when you get those quilted up, they look pretty darn good. Yes, they do. And these are the wide backs. And then those on the bottom are the textures. textures. And there again, there were some repeat textures, like the mint is repeated. And this is the panel in the fruit jar. So all of the Adele's had a panel with the seasonal flowers in a fruit jar. And this is um, the panel or the kit uh, sampler. And that's the cute little box that comes in. This quilt is currently at the quilter, so we don't have it to show to you. But it turned out, my seamstress delivered it the other day and I was really pleased with how it turned out. And then there's the Joy quilt. And this pattern, this um, panel pattern is a free download from Riley Blake Designs. If you go on their website, you can find it. And then this is um, in a fruit jar winter. So every line, since my mother, grandmother always put her flowers in a fruit jar, every line has a kit of the fruit jar runner. And at Christmas, it's, it's the pine and the bulbs. This is a little Santa runner. So he's coming out of the chimney. Mm -hmm. That's very cute. And then I'll, I usually always do a one block quilt too. So just one block repeated in mm -hmm. all the different fabrics. Mm -hmm. That's why you get Gorgeous. to use the fabrics. I think this might be a fat quarter bundle. Oh no, 10 inch stacker. Excellent. And the fabric is behind you on the shelf. How wide is the panel? The panel is 36 by 43. So that's a little more space to work with. Right. Makes a more substantial kind of project. Cut off, but we can unroll it. And this is the panel. When snow falls, nature listens. Beautiful. And Adele was your grandmother. Right. That was her, her name, and she was my grandmother on my uh, um, father's side. They lived on a farm and I just, I loved going there. So anyway, these are the prints that go with it. Uh, we've got the mint green in there. All the Adele lines have the mint green because of course the fruit jars were the minty blue color. So they all have, even the fall line had some mint in it, so. Now I see this blue on the left here. There's no mint in there, nope. but gorgeous. It's, it's not the Adele series. This was called Sunshine and Dewdrops. And I did not do this. I did not know that the war in Ukraine was going to break out when I did this, but it delivered about the time that the war had broke out. So a lot wow. of people have used this. Um, the colors are just right. Right. The colors are just right for that. So that was just a coincidence. And that one also has a panel. Right. And this one, um, this whole line, I actually... Um, painted out. This whole line is painted out watercolor on paper. Um, a lot of the lines now I'm doing on the computer. Oops. 
I, they're still all hand drawn. They're just done on the computer. This is birds. There we go. And the quilts that go with this line are currently at a quilt shop, so I don't have those. They're out on a trunk show. Trunk shows are good. Mm -hmm. And in all my 28 years, I had never done a yellow and blue line. Really? Yeah. The classic yellow and blue, you yeah. hadn't done it before. No. Well, well it was know, about time then. Seasons. It's not yep. really, yeah. Yep. So. Very nice. Her studio is like her fabric. Fun, colorful, creative, and beautiful. She has been an inspiration to quilters everywhere for years. If you ever get a chance to meet Sandy or take a class from her, don't miss out on that opportunity. Here's more from our interview in September. How did you get into the designing fabric business? Well, I started out designing greeting cards is where I actually started. Well, before that, I, I did finished goods in the 80s of like cutesy country dolls and stuff like that. And I got sick of doing the repetitive stuff. So then I went into greeting cards and I did that when our daughter started kindergarten, I started that business and I did that for maybe 10 years and then I started designing fabric. And before I started designing fabric, I started designing quilt patterns. Um, got interested in sewing again, went to Country Threads, which was a little quilt shop about 20 minutes from us and just kind of got back into sewing again. And I started making little, little wall hangings that were basically kind of like my greeting cards only they were on a quilt and it was all heat and bond and wasn't any real quilting involved <laughs> <laughs> and that's how i got started and i took my pattern business to market and that's where um moda fabric asked me to design for them and i was with um, moda for 25 years and before i switched on over to riley blake just three and a half years ago where do you get your inspiration you know, people ask me that all the time and I really can't, I don't have an answer for that. Things just pop into my head. I mean, I, I have so many little drawings and ideas and notepads that I will never, ever get everything done, ever. Wow, that's sad for us, but exciting <laughs> for you that you have yeah, so I, much I just, to work with. Yeah, I, I've never had trouble coming up with something. And of course I do the holidays, so you know, that's pretty easy because it's pretty predetermined. Right, right. So how do you pick your colors? Um, there again, it's kind of dictated by the season. Um, and my colors are always warm, warm blues, warm greens, warm reds. I don't do cool colors ever. And I just, I don't know. They just, the colors I never can find on a paint chart. I mix my own colors. And then I take it to the paint store and they zap it for me so I have the paint. But very rarely do I find the color that's in my head on a paint chart. So you make your own, you, you design what you like and you mm -hmm. make your own. Right. I just mix paint and mix paint by hand until I get the color I, that's in my head. Okay. Well, that takes a lot of knowledge about how to mix colors and things. Well, and it takes, I mean, I, it, I can work a week on just colors. Wow. Getting the color right. I would say that's one of the longest process. Once I get the colors, then I'm on a roll. Okay, so the colors starts it out. Right. Interesting. So tell us about your fabric design process, how you start, what you think about. Okay, uh, like I said, I usually start with, you know, the, the season that's pre predicted. And I start with the colors and then I usually do the panel first, always, almost always do the panel first. And then I do the little prints off of that. And the last print I usually do is the main print. And I don't know why I do that last, but I usually do. So you can pull everything kind of yeah into it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I, years ago when I first started, because this was that many years ago, we were pre computer art programs for sure. Uh, in fact, when I started, I didn't have a computer. I didn't have an email address. The hottest thing when I started was a Watts line, the one that 800 numbers, they were called <laughs> Watts lines. <laughs> so there was, you know, everything was done by hand and I painted everything out by hand. And then about five, six years ago, maybe even longer than that now, I started drawing everything by hand, but doing it on the computer. Okay. On like a Wacom drawing tablet. Okay. 
And then you do a lot of your own painting. You right. do all your own painting. If I do it, um, very rarely anymore do I do a hand-painted line. It's usually done on the computer. The Adele lines were done by hand, the panels. And I don't know why. They just, it, it just, I couldn't get the fruit jar look on the computer. So I painted that out by hand. Okay. Um, uh, even though I do them on the computer, they still are all hand drawn. So they don't have that perfect, nothing is perfect because I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what being art, an artist is about. It's right. nothing's perfect. Right. It's all just individual. Your um, design work is done on the computer now. Mm -hmm. Does that make it easier for you? You know, it took some getting used to, you know, I, it really did. Um, now it's, it's really easier because when I go to do my main print, I can grab something from one of the prints I've already done and put that in the main print. You so can, it helps. It helps. It makes it a lot easier. A little faster, I a bet. A little faster. And then like every line we have to do a logo with it. Well, I just pull those from the prints that I've already done or from the panel where otherwise I'd have to paint that all out. So, so it saves a lot of time. It does. It does. I, I've adjusted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how much, how much time do you spend a week? Would you say like working on designs? Well, I work full time for sure. You know, mm -hmm. um, at least 40 hours a week. I do spend a lot of time doing pattern proofing and making sure the patterns are correct. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't have to spend so much time doing that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel you yeah, on that. Yeah, left brain. I don't like left brain, so yeah. How many patterns and books have you produced over the years? Well, every line of fabric, I do patterns to go with it, to use the fabric, to showcase the fabric. And I just finished my 777th pattern. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Now, I am, they're not all active anymore. We discontinued some of them, of course, but a lot of them are still active. And um, we have our own print company, so we print on demand. So we don't have to have inventory. So we can hang on to patterns longer than maybe we could when you wouldn't want to do a reprint of, say, a thousand of an older pattern. Right. So you can yeah. print as you go? Right. We just print as we go. Awesome. So if somebody wants an older pattern, it's possible to get it. Right. If it's on our website, it's possible to get it because we don't have to, you know, when we run out of it, we don't have to print a thousand of them. And if it's an older pattern, you probably wouldn't print a thousand of them. No. Right. Right. Um, do you have any hobbies? Um, you know, things change with time. We now have four grandchildren. And so a lot of our time is spent, we have a cabin. And so they love to come to the cabin. So a lot of our time is spent, you know, with the grandchildren fishing and we use the cabin year round. So we ice fish and we have a huge ice skate rink out there. So I do, um, that's kind of my hobby right now is my grandkids. That's a great hobby. Yeah. I don't, I don't do, you know, I, of course, do my work, my quilting, which is some people's hobby, but it's my work, so yep. I can't call that my hobby, but right now, it's, I'd say I have to say it's the grandkids. Excellent hobby. Mm -hmm. Excellent hobby. Um, where can people find you online? How can they uh, get a hold of your patterns and your fabrics? Um, our website is piecesformyheart.net, .net, not .com. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Gervais Sandy. I have a Facebook, piecesformyheart.com. Um, that's it. So Sandy, where are you from? I'm actually from Jackson, Minnesota. Again, a small little town. I grew up just a half a mile from the Iowa border. And interesting thing, I lived in Minnesota, but we had a Spirit Lake, Iowa address. Oh, really? Yes, which was very confusing when you went to, <laughs> to school and you know you had to pay out, uh, fill out the basic skills, your name, the address, but it yes. just, it didn't change until I was probably a freshman in high school before wow. it changed. Well, that's something we have in common because when I was growing up, I went to school in Four City. We lived, our address was Clear Lake, and our phone number was a fertile phone number. So oh. I was kind of confused about where I was from, too. Oh, so, no kidding. Yeah. And we had a Spirit Lake Iowa phone, too. Isn't that funny? Yes. So, which wasn't any fun because all my friends had a Jackson line, <laughs> you know, so that wasn't fun. No, you can't call them. <laughs> I went to a country school uh -huh. until fourth grade. It went to sixth grade, but that is when the Minnesota country schools closed. Okay. So I went K through four in a one-room country school. 
Oh, fun. I was in 4-H for 10 years. 10 years? Awesome. awesome. My mother taught me how to sew when I was 8. So, so you've been sewing for been a while? I've been sewing for a long time. That's great. And I didn't start quilting until way later in life. I always made garments in high so school. So you were more of a garment sewer she than She taught a... me to, yeah. Okay. My mother didn't quilt at all until later in her life either. She was in her 60s probably when she started quilting. So. Great age to start quilting. Yeah. Awesome. So how long have you lived in Iowa? All of my married life, which will be 50 years next year. Congratulations. In the same That's town. Awesome. We've always lived in Algona. Okay. So. so Algona, Iowa has always been your home. Yep. For a long time. It's obviously been a lot of great inspiration from you because you've had a lot of great fabric lines. Yeah. So it works. It works. <laughs> okay, Sandy, it's time for the lightning round. Are you ready for some questions? We want to know about the real Sandy Gervais. Okay. So just give me a one word answer and we'll find out what she really thinks about okay. things. All right, favorite drink? Caramel latte. Mmm, favorite color? Red. Favorite season? Summer. Summer, I would have guessed fall, but okay. We'll, uh, we'll let you have summer, because okay. it's pretty darn good. Um, kids? I have two children, Abby and Andy. Abby and Anthony. Abby is Aunt married to Andy, and they have two children. Uh, this is not a one word. Is this That's okay. <laughs> They have two children, Anderson and Adrian. Anthony is married to Deb, and they have a girl, Adeline, and a little boy, Sullivan. So four grandchildren. Four grandchildren. Awesome. Very workable number. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> two hands for yeah, each grandparent. It's yes, very absolutely good. Um, uh, mountain or lake? Lake. Text or talk? Talk. Talk. <laughs> um, paint or sketch? Oh, I do both. You do both. You can't. You well, I have to be sketch both. before I can paint. Usually, That's true. I rarely just. I know there are people that can just start painting. I can't do that. I That's not your thing. Some lines, yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite day of the week? Well, Friday. Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big city, small town. Small town. Small town all the way. That's the way. how I feel too. Uh, mystery or romance? Mystery. Mystery. I'm a mystery girl too. Yeah. Um, morning person or night owl? Well, I used to be a night owl, but the older I get, I'm, I can't work past eight anymore. It's, nor do I get up at five. You don't need to. <laughs> I guess I'm in the middle of the day. You're in the middle? Okay. Yeah. Middle's good. Middle's good. Uh, favorite vacation? Hawaii. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Place I want to go. That'd be awesome. Favorite holiday? Christmas. Christmas? Favorite junk food? Oh, boy, there's a lot of them. <laughs> just, just one? <laughs> You can if you ha if you could only have one. What? Well, right food? now I'm eating score candy bars. Score candy. Oh, those are really mm -hmm. good. Okay, I can see the passion for that. Um, cake or pie? Pie. Pie. What's your favorite? Any? I love raisin cream. It's Ooh. a good raisin cream. Mm-hmm. All right. Middle name? K. K. Sandy K. Do you have a favorite fabric line that has come out that you've done? What's your favorite of all time? Or is it always the most recent? Yeah, I was going to say it just usually is the most recent. That makes sense because that's what you're, you've right. been working on. That's right. what your passion's been. Mm -hmm. That's what you've been that's focused what, on. Yeah, that's what my brain's working on. And yeah, I would say it just changes every time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that because when I get fabric in the store, whatever whatever's the newest is my most favorite. Right. And that's the one you're And people come in and they to. want to know where the new stuff is. It, absolutely. They want to see that first. Absolutely. So. But there's a lot of good old stuff, too. Oh, yes, yes. That stuff is always good. Yep. Um, we want to thank Sandy for participating in our little interview here. We appreciate her hosting us at her studio. If you've enjoyed our interview with Sandy Gervais, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment for us, Share this interview with your quilting friends and subscribe for more quilting content from The Quilted Forest. Sandy is lots of fun and we shared some great laughs. Here's our blooper reel. Enjoy! Anything else you'd like people to know about you? <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of a private person. <laughs> you know, That's... I don't do this very often. No, I know. <laughs> It's, I'm so thankful that you took the time to answer a few of my questions and, and let people see a little bit of behind the scenes of what it's like to uh, design fabric and work with a fabric company. And we sure appreciate you answering our questions. All right, now we're gonna try not to get the fingers in the screen. All right, 
All right, Sandy, how long have you been a fabric designer? <laughs> um, let me think. Maybe. <laughs> this is the trouble I have, too. <laughs> Trying to unroll the darn panels. So you have to do a lot of editing. editing. That's okay. I can do that. And um, let's see what else did I want to say. This, this is the part where I, like, say a bunch of stuff and, and then I edit, edit out it. all the stupid things that yeah. I say because <laughs> I say a lot of stupid things. Thanks for watching our interview and happy quilting.